Hi. Happy Sunday, April 19th. Can you guess where I am? If you can, you could win a custom Bible covering. Leather, suede, blue jean fabric, floral print, your choice. I'd be happy to do that. If you can guess where I am, uh, let me know your guess. We continue our survey of Augur's sayings, that proverbial writer found in Proverbs chapter 30. This is the third numerical saying. We looked at two already. Today, we're going to consider verses 18 and 19. And they're entitled, Four Amazing Things. Four Amazing Things. Four Amazingly Incomprehensible Things. Object Lessons. That um, by which we can derive a sense of, of awe of the one who put those objects there for our consideration. So, Proverbs chapter 30 and uh, 18 through 19. All right, here we go. Three things are too wondrous for me, four I can't understand the way of an eagle in the sky, the way of a snake on a rock the way of a ship at sea, and the way of a man with a young woman. Notice, first of all, that the, the writer is not focusing so much on uh, the eagle, the snake, the ship, or the man, as he is the way of each of these, the, uh, the course of action that uh, the eagle takes, the, the snake, the way of that snake, the way of that ship, the way of that man with his um, beloved. So um, in each of these four scenarios, there's a, there's a, a sense of mysteriousness. This is just a, a mystery. Um, each of them uh, they're, the way in which they take is, is non-traceable. You, you, there, is no, there is no path that, that they are making their way down. Um, each masters a very difficult element. And um, so let's, let's take a look at this, this first one. Three things that are too wonderful for me. Four, I just simply can't understand. First of all, the way of an eagle in the sky. The way of an eagle in the sky. A wondrous thing, yes? I'm so fortunate to live here on Halfway Pond Road where just across the street is this eagle sanctuary. The other day I looked up and I, I'm pretty sure I spotted uh, a soaring eagle. I am told that you can distinguish uh, a hawk from a turkey vulture from an eagle because uh, an eagle's wingspan is um, straight across flat like a board, whereas the other two have a somewhat of a V formation. Correct me if I'm wrong, that's, that's what I, I heard. The, the way of an eagle in the sky, let's consider the eagle first. The eagle is a very large bird. In fact, uh, they reach uh, 14 pounds. Um, they have a wingspan of about seven and a half feet. 14 pound bird, we're talking uh, like a Thanksgiving turkey. A uh, 14 pound bowling ball, that's a pretty good size bowling ball. Uh, this wingspan, seven and a half feet. Consider the average tall person, say a six foot man. And now attack on an additional foot and a half. That's we're up there at the, some of the tallest basketball players, not the average basketball player, the, 
the, the very tallest ones may possibly reach seven and a half feet. That's a big bird. Uh, the way of an eagle, the way in which it soars, it, it does very, very little flapping of the wings, uh, mostly soaring, gliding, motionless. We're told that the, the eagle is um, especially equipped to, uh, when he's fully extended, that he's actually in a relaxed um, position. It's an, it's a, he soars at altitudes of 10,000 feet with ease. And from two miles away can spot a rabbit in the field because his eyes are between four and eight times as, as keen as yours and mine. The way of an eagle is so mysterious, so awesome, amazing, incomprehensible. By the way, you want to you want to compare notes with Alice, Alice of, of Iowa. Um, she watches the Decor Eagles online. She um, follows them very closely. There's a 24-7 webcam that's fastened to a nest out there in Decora, Iowa. And, um, and so she follows the whole developmental process of a family of eagles. And uh, she just texted me this week and said uh, uh, that this, this new little eaglet that recently emerged is well-fed in that the mother and father, which by the way, the, the parent eagles uh, mate for life, they share in the uh, care of their young. But she said, this week they brought up to the nest to feed the, those eaglet, or that eaglet or those eaglets, um, not one fish or two or three or five, <laughs> seven fish. That's pretty good. Pretty good feeding. <laughs> a little eaglet, seven fish. The way of an eagle in the sky, uh, just uh, amazingly incomprehensible. Um, who can understand it? The proverbial writer f goes to his next object lesson. The way of a snake on a rock. The way of a snake on a rock. <clears throat> Snakes oftentimes make their homes in the rocks for several reasons. Um, being a cold-blooded reptile they like to crawl in or behind stones that may have been warmed by the sun during the day. And, uh, and also, um, rocks, uh, think, think of a retaining wall. Uh, lots of rocks piled on one another, lots of crevices and cracks, and places to hide and habitate. And not only the snakes are there, but in this condominium complex, there are all sorts of creatures. And so here, this the snake um, uh, hiding itself hunts and finds easy prey rodents running past his doorway. So um, now the the way of a snake in the sand can be traced. It will leave that serpentine path. You can see, okay. Um, that's, that's, those are footprints in the sand, um, of a snake, but not so on the rock. He, he masters that mountainous element and his way is untraceable. It's a mysterious thing. Um, the way of a snake on a rock. His third object lesson, the way of a ship at sea, the way of a, of a ship at sea. 
This is a uh, model, a replica of a um, recently um, unearthed or ar archaeologically um, discovered and restored uh, ancient Greek ship, about 2,500 years old. Um, I'll just put it right here. The way of a ship at sea, you and I, when we travel from here to there, we have to stay between the lines, uh, uh, or else you bump into a guardrail or, or, or the oncoming traffic. Um, Ocean-going vessels have this immense uh, body of water. They plot their course and they go. Um, no speed limits out there that I'm aware of. Correct me if I'm wrong. Cargo ships today have immense ca capacity to carry just ginormous loads, more than 5,000 cars uh, on one ship. Uh, hundreds of thousands of these containers just stacked in rows and rows. Um, moving cargo from one continent to the other and how that tonnage that multiple hundreds of thousands of tons vehicle uh, can remain afloat and not sink like a rock the way of a ship out at sea mysterious thing masters that difficult element um, and once he's left harbor and headed out to the big blue sea, there's no path, there's no trace that he was ever, ever there. Fourth, the way of a man with a young woman. Some of the earlier translations say the way of a man with a virgin. The idea here is an um, unmarried couple espoused in love the way of a of a bachelor or, or a groom better an espoused groom with house with his espoused bride is just um it's mysterious it's marvelous um uh, mastering difficult terrain um and I'd like to just consider with you the quintessential groom with his beloved bride, the Son of God, with his, his espoused bride, his beloved. I turn to Song of Solomon for this I to gain a little insight because as Charles Spurgeon aptly points out, the Song of Solomon is the holiest of holies in the Bible. Isn't that interesting? The holiest of holies. It's in the center. Um, what's he say? It stands in the middle of the Bible as the holiest of holies, the central point of all. A beautiful love song inspires us like grace, creating within us a desire for its beauty. Like such an enchanting love song, Solomon's song inspires a pursuit of the love it portrays. This romantic delight is not a modern fairy tale or a fantasy from the past, but reflects God's desire to form within us a pure and devoted love. We discover that there is a bliss in married love that is reflective of the greater love believers experience as the bride of Christ. As this book's imagery informs us of romantic love, it also helps us to anticipate the full consummation of our relationship with with Christ when he returns for his bride. The way of a man 
the God-man with his beloved bride. Is there anything like, is there anything more mysterious than his passion for his beloved? Is there anything more awe-inspiring? Chapter 2 and verse 8. Listen, this is, this is the, the bride speaking. Listen, my love is approaching. Look, here he comes, leaping over the mountains, bounding over the hills. My love is like a gazelle or a young stag. See, he's standing behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattice. My love calls to me. Now this is him speaking. Arise, my darling. Come away, my beautiful one. For now, winter is past. The rain has ended and gone away. The blossoms appear in the countryside. The time of singing has come. When the turtle dove's cooing is heard in our land, the fig tree ripens its figs. The blossoming vines give off their fragrance. Arise, my darling. Come away, my beautiful one. My dove in the clefts of the rock, in the clevices of the cliff. Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is sweet and your, your face is lovely. Four mysterious, amazingly incomprehensible things, the fourth of which is the capstone, the way of our Savior with his bride.